Greetings, and thank you for joining us for another SANS ICS Concept Overview. I'm Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security and a certified SANS instructor. In this Concept Overview, we are joined by Justin Searle, a director at InGuardians and a senior SANS instructor. Justin is the author of the SANS ICS 410 course and the hosted Assessing and Exploiting Control Systems class. He is joining us today to help us understand who should take these classes and what students will learn. If you enjoy this video and the topics we cover in the SANS ICS concept overviews, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment if you have a question about this topic or suggestions for future content. Welcome everybody and thank you for coming back to see another SANS ICS concept video. This time I'm joined by Justin Searle, a good friend of mine. He's a director over at InGuardians. Uh, he runs the Control Things uh, .io website and uh, he is also one of the authors. He's a, a, a senior instructor at SANS authoring the ICS 410 class and a private kind of a, a hosted, we call it a hosted class within SANS, but it also teaches it outside of SANS, the accessing and exploiting control things. Mm -hmm. So I asked Justin here to talk to us a little bit about uh, the uh, SANS ICS 410 class, the accessing and exploiting class. Uh, and you know, Justin, uh, can you help people understand what these classes are and, uh, yeah. um, and what students will learn? Yeah, not a problem. Um, actually, both these classes launched back in 2013 at a, a, about the same time, but they were kind of totally different uh, intents and, and originally completely different audiences. So the Assessing and Exploiting Control Systems course uh, originally launched at Black Hat. That was the, uh, the first time I had taught it. It was a course that I originally wrote for my customers because, um, you know, doing work inside of industrial control systems, one question that people always had is, Right. Should we be considering penetration testing? Is penetration testing safe? And, uh, you know, through 2009 to 2012 timeframe, I had worked on several different projects with NIST, with Department of Energy, with with DHS, with EPRI. And, uh, you know, that one of the topics we had actually gotten into in 2011 and 2012 was, well, well, how do you do penetration testing and security testing and and how do you do it safely inside of an industrial control system? Because that was right. That, that, that's what I was doing. And there wasn't a lot of firms that was out there. And so I, uh, back in 2011, 2012, I originally did uh, a, a white paper that was called, uh, boy, what was it called? Now I actually even forgot. Uh, that was for NESCOR. It was a uh, NESCOR penetration yeah. testing in utilities. For electric utilities. Yeah. So yeah. the NESCOR penetration testing for utilities, electric utilities, because uh, NESCOR was basically a, a, a private public um, kind of an initiative that was set up between EPRI and uh, Department of Energy, Department of Homeland Security. And, uh, you know, I, I was leading the testing team. And that was something that was the document that our testing team, one of the documents we came up with. And so That's really true. what I did is I... Explain. Yeah, that was actually the document that I I learned how to do all of this off <laughs> and, and uh, you know, when I started. So... Uh, Oh yeah, no, no worries. But yeah, that was that was that was really the the document where I I took what I was doing for penetration testing at the time for electric utilities and basically documented it right inside of a in, inside of a paper. And we ended up having three different releases or three different versions of that came out. And one question that was continually popping up uh, after we released it in 2012 is, well, well, what tools do you use? How do you go about doing this? And so that's when I originally created the the WTF. Uh, or sorry, not WTF, Samurai, Samurai SDFU, right? The security testing framework for utilities. Uh, that was based on the Samurai WTF, the web testing for utilities, or sorry, web testing framework. But uh, yeah, so that, that, Samurai, that Samurai SDFU basically was a Linux distribution with the tools that was there. And once I kind of put that out to the world, because it was something that I was, you know, kind of already doing and maintaining on my own laptop uh, anyway, uh, I started pushing that out to the world and people started saying, well, can you provide some training around this, right? What information, uh, you know, how, how do you go about using these tools inside of some of these environments? And that gave a rise to the uh, the course I originally wrote for my clients and started teaching at Black Hat. Uh, and it was around that same time that, uh, you know, the whole uh, GICSP from industry kind of started and the industry wanted to, to create a certification for industrial control system cybersecurity. And um, so I started writing the ICS 410 course for, for SANS, um, right, kind of about a year after I had started the, uh, the other one, but they ended up launching pretty close to the same time. Um, 
and yeah, it basically been two classes. So there were two classes that, right, since they were being designed at the same time, and since I'm the the author of both of them, I've, I've just made sure that both classes are kind of, right, uh, in alignment with, uh, you know, virtually no overlap of material or, or very, very minor, just enough that I can, right, so somebody that hasn't had ICS 410, I can actually get them up to speed inside of uh, assessing and exploiting, right, so they're not, so they're not lost. But yeah, just, just kind of two very different classes. The ICS 410 is based on defense and what are the basic security uh, defenses and techniques and architectures we should be using to have a defensible infrastructure. And the assessing and exploiting is, is really more about, well, once you have a defensible infrastructure or started implementing the defenses, how do we test those defenses? Excellent. So wh where would students start? I mean, should they start with the ICS 410 class? If they got pen testing experience, should they uh, start with the pen testing class? What would be your recommendation uh, for different types of students coming in from your experiences? No, I, I think it really, really, it comes into being what is your original intent, right? The, the courses are designed so they're totally standalone. You can take one or the other, or you can take both, right, without having the overlap. But really, it comes down to intent. If you're intending to be a defender and implement these defenses and you uh, either you know come from the engineering world and don't have cybersecurity knowledge or you're coming from the IT cybersecurity and trying to figure out how to do things safely inside of ICS. Right. If you're a defender or planning on being a defender, that's what ICS 410 really is, is built for. Uh, on the flip side, if you are instead interested in doing cybersecurity testing, uh, of some of these environments and, and more on that offensive testing, uh, penetration testing, you know, type initiatives. That's what I created the assessing and exploiting class for that doesn't depend on ICS 410. We give you just enough background knowledge for, you know, for the, the, the systems and the architectures, but really the content's different because the day-to-day -day tasks are different for these individuals. So we focus on, right, how do we go through and actually do the testing? What are the different levels of tests we can do? Right. How do we adapt the knowledge and what's different and unique about some of these environments? And right. What can we do in production and what should we never do in production and do only in some type of a lab type setting? Yeah, since I since I teach both classes, I, I do realize that there's a slightly different uh, um, uh, technical dive uh, in, into uh, um, that's provided both of them. So there, there's labs in both uh, um, courses. Uh, but so can you explain some of the differences between uh, the technical experiences, uh, the deep dives that student might have uh, uh, between each one? Definitely. Uh, I, I would say from a technical perspective, the ICS 410 definitely is a uh, not as, as, as technical, right? Because in that class, we basically have to, we cover the, the breadth of you know, what defenses are and what the architectures are and how do you apply this to uh, to an ICS infrastructure and right based on the, the risk or criticality of the systems you're dealing with, because not every ICS system is the same. Right. Um, especially from that that risk perspective that's there. But uh, um, so so that course, the hands on exercise on that course, I would say that course is maybe 70 percent lecture, 30 percent hands on. Um, because in that course, we are primarily trying to teach people the knowledge set and the, the theory behind it and the, the, the understanding of it. And then all the hands-on really are there to kind of help try to emphasize or to give additional context or insight into, you know, what we do inside of a, inside of a defensive, you know, type scenario uh, for these areas. Uh, and even gets a little bit into testing, right, to, to help people kind of think about that um, you know, about what an attacker actually does to make your defenses a little bit uh, more more practical. Where the assessing and exploiting class, that is that is definitely a deeper technical knowledge. And for people coming into that, we usually recommend at least some type of penetration testing uh, background. Doesn't mean it doesn't matter if that's web, network pen testing, right? Some other area or really any other type of, of security testing. But just anybody that has a, a, you know, kind of a decent understanding of, of types of different cybersecurity vulnerabilities and, you know, maybe has been exposed to trying to, to probe for those vulnerabilities before, um, you know, that's the background for ICS 410, or sorry, the, the SSA Exploiting Control Systems course. And assessing ex Exploiting Control Systems, um, from a hands-on perspective, that's more of a 70% hands-on, 30% lecture, and very, very different setup, right? Where 410 is more self-guided exercises, um, the assessing and exploiting is, is more of kind of a, a classroom type, type effort where the instructor is doing the exercises at uh, the time with you. And, and the exercises are, are basically doing the assessments themselves. Uh, that assessing and exploiting is built around nine different modules 
Each module is a different type of an assessment that we would perform inside of an industrial control system environment. And for the vast majority of those modules, we literally are stepping through each of the tasks in those assessment types and performing them as a course or as a class with the instructor doing it up on their machine in front of you and everybody inside of the audience is doing it along. And it just is a, a very kind of a more unique classroom setting because uh, if you have a problem or a question on side of the tool, right, the instructor has it right there open in sync with you. Everybody's in sync with what's going on. You know, people can work ahead if they if they want to because I provide some of those steps. But uh, it's just it, it's just kind of a fun environment, right, where you're not just kind of following steps of instructions like click here, click here, click here. Right. We're talking about the tools and we're digging deeper into the tools. And, you know, people come up with questions that aren't in the exercise. And like, what if you do this? I don't know. Let's try it. Right. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a fun exploratory class that that uh, honestly, between the two, I definitely have a little bit of a preference to do the more technical one. Um, because it's just a, a little bit more free to, to be able to play with and, and to get down into the, the weeds. And that's the course where we end up spending probably half of the hands-on exercises gets into different techniques for reverse engineering, right? right. How do we um, tackle, tackle proprietary protocols? protocols? How do we tackle proprietary RF communications? How do you tackle um, different types of embedded circuits and, and EPROMs that are on that, which by their very nature are proprietary to that one single device? Yeah, I, um, you know, when, when you're talking about the technical deep dive uh, that we're able to do in the, the accessing exploit class, I think that actually gets me in trouble with the ICS 410 class because <laughs> I, I carry that over to some of my labs uh, and all of a sudden I realize, hey, we're, we're going over time. So um, <laughs> uh, so I, I do try to do a little bit, of it, but, you know, I'm, we're, we're always constrained a little bit because of that step by step uh, in yeah. the SANS class. I do really like the... Uh, um, the accessing exploiting class where we can uh, learn from, you know, I, I learn as much uh, um, from students uh, um, as I do teaching students. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun. You no, know, I'm good. asking you these questions. I'm kind of got, you know, uh, as things pop up, what do you want to highlight about these uh, uh, different courses that would help students uh, um, understand it a little better? Boy, that's a, that's actually a really good question, right? Um <laughs> They're both so, so they're so unique, but they both build upon each other depending on what your intent is. Um, so, you know, I, I think probably some of the things to highlight inside of the ICS 410, one, one thing that I spent a lot of time going into in ICS 410 is really digging into more of uh, you know, network architectures and some of the technologies behind them. Because you know, there's one thing to understand you know, what type of defense you can install on an endpoint, what type of defense you can install on uh, a network device, right? What are the goals of what those defenses do? Uh, what are their capabilities? What are their short sites? Where do they work well inside of ICS, uh, different Purdue levels, right? Down inside of the process or up in the supervisory level, right? What defenses work better in each of those areas? Which defenses don't work? Which defenses are dangerous? And that's really kind of the core of ICS 410 is I'm trying to take people right, with whatever knowledge they come into the class. And if and a larger percentage do come more from an IT security background to ICS 410. And my biggest thing there is trying to teach them what 20% of your knowledge set is dangerous for ICS and should you never do, right? Or do in a very limited scenario. And we spent a lot of time, I think the other thing that I continually keep on tweaking and extending in ICS 410 is, you know, some of the concepts around um, cybersecurity architectures that are defensible for ICS, right? Talk about, you know, how we can't change a lot of the legacy, but when you get greenfield deployment, how there's a lot we can actually offer to make it more defensible. And in and in these legacy sites where you can't necessarily re-architect the network to make it more defensible, right? How to kind of base our understanding on what the engineers have already put together and figure out the right location to actually put some of those defenses, right? And what some of those benefits are going to provide to you. So that's something I'm always doing. And, and probably another really big one that's always a, a huge conversation in class is you know kind of proper use of the Purdue levels uh, and how the Purdue levels work because the Purdue levels were created by engineers for engineers. We in cybersecurity kind of co-opt them uh, and and now probably use them far more than most engineers uh, you know did traditionally, um, especially in manufacturing where it was originally created and, and where probably it has the the least use or understanding amongst the engineers today, which is kind of funny. But uh, because of that co-option of cybersecurity. 
and multiple different companies doing this all in parallel, there's been crazy variations of how the Purdue level is being used and, and different levels assigned and, you know, theories about, you know, can you have one level talk to another level that's not adjacent? Can a level one talk to a level three, right? You know, these crazy types of, of conversations like that. Um, and, uh, you know, just talking, just getting into it and saying, well, let's explore that. What, what does right. that actually mean? What's the pros and cons of doing something like that? Right. What would it look like if we actually implement it so that we forced every level to talk to each other? If I had something that from an architectural perspective, how the vendor created it, a level one needs to talk to a level three or level one needs to talk to a cloud. Right. What are the different ways we could implement it? What are the pros and cons about those different methods for, for doing it? And, and in the course, we, for the most part, follow 62443 guidance. And I'm a huge fan of 62443, but there's a, there's two or three things in 62443 that we kind of call out and saying, hey, this probably isn't the best way to do it, right? What are some alternate methods? And I'll say, this is my recommendation to clients and right, let people choose their own adventure. Do you want to strictly follow 62443 or do you want to make some minor tweaks to it uh, that I usually make? And uh, you know, you can choose which adventure is most enjoyable or, or um, maybe, uh, meets your needs to the, the greatest degree, we'll say. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that, that's what I find about the the ICS 410 class is the people that I know that have taken that, um, it's easier for me to talk to them because we have a a, um, a foundation of ter uh, terminologies and concepts. And even if it's different from sector to sector or even company to company, um, at least we have that uh, um, core concepts that we can pull yeah. from. They, they know what uh, um, where I'm coming from. Uh, and then we can understand our differences a, a, a little bit better uh, and have better conversations. Yeah, um, no, definitely you know, so. From a, a, an accessing and exploiting standpoint, I, I, I know we have a slide. Um, uh, yep. do, you, uh, do you want me to uh, throw that up real quick? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and throw that slide up because this slide kind of gives us a good overview of what's actually inside of assessing and exploiting and, and why it's different than ICS 410. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and more importantly, why it's different than maybe other penetration testing courses. Because I also did this where I'm trying very intentionally to to minimize any overlap from any other penetration test course that that most people have have traditionally had. And, so uh, this basically one of, my, one of my things about this, Justin, and I apologize uh, about this, oh, but you're fine. Uh, um, you know, it, because we, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, the people that uh, I interact with a lot. Um, there's a lot of security researchers, especially, you know, and, and they've been focusing on uh, doing security research on these, uh, you know, softwares and equipment um, and solutions for, for 10 years. But we have a, you know, a, a big surge in people wanting to get in, into this research and understanding that. And uh, um, that's that's why I like uh, the modules, how you broke down those different modules um, uh, uh, to help not only from a assessment standpoint, but also the security research standpoint. Yeah. And, and and I think something I also try to do throughout assessing exploiting, this is a class that that does continually evolve. Uh, I'm actually, my, my development version is version 49 right now. So I've had 49 different revisions. I usually update the course about every other time that I teach it. So I don't usually teach any single revision more than twice on average. So that means that uh, with, with version 48, right, or version 49 that I'm currently working on, uh, having taught version 48 at uh, Black Hat Las Vegas and, uh, and as well for a private client, um, right? It, it's a class that kind of evolves very, very quickly where I'm making multiple updates per year. I mean, it means I've taught it almost 100 times. So it's definitely a, a very more mature class. And over the years, I've, I've evolved it. And, and my current state of this class is each module represents a different assessment type because one of the goals that that I have that I've kind of evolved into is I want people to take this class and try to make them as efficient as possible or as productive as possible right out of the gate. So I, I, I give just enough theory to have people understand some of the concepts, but trying to give them practical tools, practical examples that are generic enough that you can use across any of these different types of industrial control systems you come across. Um, but at the same time, right, something that is the appropriate level for a, a classroom type setting that doesn't get overly complex, not too simplistic, right, but not too overly complex. And so if you look at the layout, right, nine different modules is, is basically what we have, and they're all numbered in, in this, this diagram that's there. And so the first one we go over is uh, system architectures, because when we do penetration testing or any type of, of assessment inside of the industrial control networks, um, Either if you're if you're looking at pen testing production, right, that is such a sensitive thing, and so many things can go so very seriously wrong inside of industrial control networks 
um, that we always say do an architecture review first. So you have times to, to, you know, a couple days to talk to the engineers and get to know them and get to understand what their risks and their concerns are, get to understand the technology, get to understand what assets are actually there so you can evolve and, and start preparing for what that penetration test is going to look like. So when you actually have your team show up to do the assessment, they actually have the appropriate tools. They know what types of protocols they are going to be getting into. They know what's sensitive. And we've not just had a 30 minute scoping call saying, be careful of these IP addresses. Don't touch these IP addresses. These IP addresses are absolutely fine, right? We've literally had a couple of days to go into detail of what do they do? What communications are they? What are their intent? Uh, and, and, Evolve and basically create different types of scenarios of, you know, how do we approach each one? Which ones are most sensitive? Do we want to have engineers and operators on hand monitoring the process real time while we're actually doing it? Um, and then from that, it, it then it then splits into kind of the two major groupings, right? The, the group in, in green and the group in yellow. The group in green is the things we do in production, right? And when we do things in production, at In Guardians, I'm the director of ICS Security and Guardians. I don't let my team ever send a single packet into a production network without at doing without doing a network capture assessment first. Because even though we do the architecture review and we have the engineers telling us what they have in the environment, right? We don't necessarily have the the 100 confirmation that the engineers necessarily know exactly what's there. Because as designed is not as um, you know in production as we run in production. So uh, the network capture assessment allows us to basically gather real data from the environment and compare that with what we learn in the architecture review and give us deeper knowledge of the assets, deeper knowledge of the protocols, and you know, kind of lets us, once again, further prepare that if we decide to send packets in and do a network, uh, network assessment, which is that, uh, that third module that's there, the production control environments, right? we'll actually be able to do that with basically our eyes wide open, right? Um, done as much due diligence as we possibly could be ever, before we ever send a single packet into the into that environment. Uh, and it talks about, right, if you're going to send packets in the environment, right, little things of, of what areas are the easiest ones, what areas are more difficult to do. Uh, if you are doing production environments, right, stick, try to stay more with the supervisory, try to stay away from the processes. Um, if you're going to do the processes, make sure the processes are online, but not in production, right? They're not actually... Um, you know, producing anything at, at that at that point and stuff. So basically, they're in an they're on they're they're in an idle state, right? So they're on, but in an idle state, uh, and that just gives you some further extra due diligence and care to make sure that you don't cause problems for those environments. And we we really specifically talk about in that section, right? How does this look different than an IT network pen test, right? What do we do differently inside of these environments? Um, you know, how do we specifically configure NMAP because NMAP can just NMAP space IP address can knock over legacy embedded devices, right? So what specific settings that are there? In fact, to tell you a, a little dirty secret, well, I guess it's not a dirty secret because it's uh, on a podcast now and actually it's been on my website for a, a couple of months now. I've actually released that that section three, the uh, assessing exploiting production control networks. I've released that 100% public on the controlthings.io website, that one module, the PDF for it. Um, so you can go over to controlthings.io under the resources a section of the website, you'll actually get that whole slide deck uh, that's there because honestly, that slide deck is something I honestly feel is so important and so many mistakes that I see other companies doing when they're trying to do assessments in, in production environments, right? That I, I just needed to make that public. And so that is 100% yeah. public now um, just to give people, you know, that understanding of, of the best practices. And you've, get, you've given a couple uh, webcasts around that module as well, right? Uh, maybe well, I mean, not, the, 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 the maybe elements of it in the past the sensitive networks. Um, yeah, that, that's based on that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the document. The, the module I release is actually scanning highly sensitive networks. Right. And so before I'd always release little snippets like the Nmap section uh, and, and the Nessa section that's that's actually there. But um, what I did just a couple months ago is I actually released the whole section. So, you know, how do we actually deal with DNS? How do we do enumeration? Um, you know, other guidance about what to test and what not to test. And so, yeah, it's it's a fairly short section. It, it was probably one of the shortest modules of the course. In the, in the five-day course, it really only represents about one single hour's worth of, of time. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's something that, like I said, it was just really trying to adapt people's knowledge. I don't want to teach people how to use Nmap. I expect people to have a basic understanding of how to use Nmap coming into the class. So it's more about 
you know, stay away from these and, and lean more towards these capabilities. Excellent. So the other modules, uh, four through nine? Mm -hmm. So yes, the uh, the lab assessment section. So those are basically the bulk of the class. Um, the production assessment really, well, the, the the network, the security architecture reviews and then getting into the network captures and the, the uh, uh, production control networks, that's only maybe the first day and a half of the five-day course. So, you know, the vast majority of the course actually focus on assessment types that we don't recommend anybody ever do inside of a production network. And these are the, the things where we can take different assets into lab environments and really start doing deep dives into, you know, a single embedded device or maybe a single solution where you have some type of a management server or supervisory server and maybe some intermediate uh, controllers and maybe some lower end field devices that are there. Right. How can we actually try to in a, in a lab setting that's that we don't have as many safety and security concerns, not zero, but we have fewer security concerns. If you don't believe me, ask Josh Wright. 220 volt sucks when you're focused on trying to uh, to do some bus sniffing on a circuit board. But um, with that, um, this is kind of the bulk of the class. And this is the stuff I'm the most excited about and the stuff that is a little bit more unique where we go into a module four. We we specifically taught, have a whole module on. How do you go through and try to assess the logic inside of a controller, right? So we have a PLC that we give out as a class because this class includes a $500 clip, which which uh, $500 hardware kit that uh, includes a, a PLC. And so we program the PLC and then we talk about how do we go through and actually test the PLC and how can we build our own testing harness? And then kind of the more fun one that I enjoy doing, how can we take an HMI, modify the HMI to become a testing harness by by adding different ways to write to the tags that the HMI that may not have traditionally had, and then turn that into a testing tool, which I, I love. I, that's my favorite way to attest lo the logic. Um, then we get into uh, module five, which gets into control protocols. And that's where we start talking about how do we deal with ICS protocols? What are some of the challenges we have? Because so few of those ICS protocols do we have open source tools for. How can we try to you know beg, borrow, and steal? Well, beg and borrow, right? Um, tools from the engineers to be able to go through and and to to try to turn them into testing tools, right, for the ICS protocols. And then that gets into enumeration of ICS protocols and writing your own fuzzers for, for some of these ICS protocols. So that's module five. That then kind of expands into two kind of um, further modules that are based off of that 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 type of theory, where what what if it's a proprietary protocol? Right. So section six is talking about proprietary serial protocols. How do I get to the serial layer? How do I capture it? How do I analyze it? How do I inject into that serial layer that's there? And if it's proprietary, what techniques do we do with proprietary protocols to, number one, understand what's there, to un reverse engineer enough that we can build a testing tool to then go through and exercise the protocol and find zero day vulnerabilities in that proprietary protocol? And then uh, module seven takes that same concept and goes one step further. What happens if it's not just a proprietary serial protocol, but if that proprietary serial protocol is over RF? Because that's actually a very common scenario we have inside of inside of modern day ICS equipment. Uh, and so we talk about software refined radio and how do we deal with the RF layer so we can get to the proprietary protocol so we can actually do the module six stuff, right? After we've done all the module seven stuff, trying to get to the RF layer itself. Uh, yeah, and then after that, then we get down into the embedded devices. So module eight's getting into uh, embedded memory. So focusing on trying to bypass security controls on embedded devices um, by dumping the contents of EEPROM and flash and analyzing, analyzing those. So how do we dump that? How do we do bus sniffing on that? Uh, and then the final one is, is nine, section nine. How do we go through and try to deal with um, different types of debug interfaces, be it either JTAG or or USB exposed uh, debug interfaces, which are fairly common on modern day devices, where we can try to dump the EEPROM, or sorry, not dump the EEPROM, dump the, the flash from the device, and not just the flash, but dump the entire memory of the embedded device, and try to carve out like the bootloader and carve out the the uh, um, the uh, flash image itself, and, and maybe the RAM section of it. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, I mean, I was going to say six and seven are my favorite modules because those are my favorite things to actually do. Uh, uh -huh. But then you got into eight and nine. I was like, oh, man, I, I, I enjoy that. I know, they're all fun. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I've been thinking about doing, um, I've actually been thinking about trying to grow the five-day class because the, the class just keeps on growing, you know, year over year. The first version was a two-day class. Now we're up to a five-day class and I keep on having to kind of 
you know, carve things and optimize different extra elements that are there. I'm actually thinking about about breaking it into two classes and growing it. Definitely, it's not coming next year, but maybe over the next couple of years, I want to try to take the um, the RF stuff, the embedded stuff uh, with memory and and uh, firmware, and then expand that into its kind of own five day class. Uh, and that would give me room to be able to more focus on some of the ICS protocols over TCP IP uh, and serial, right? Because uh, that that definitely is a little bit of a difference in the frequency we do those types of assessments and the different individuals trying to do those assessments. So that's something I would like to do at some point. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the RF one, one thing I would love to do in the RF class to expand it to is right now we're, we're talking about some of the more basic modulation types. And we have a whole bunch of exercises in, in getting students to, to, to do live captures and, and fully reverse engineer and get down to where they can start working on the protocol layer of the RF stuff. But I want to get into some more of the intermediate type modulation stuff. But I also want to be one of the first classes to ever tackle frequency hopping in a classroom setting and actually do that in a way that's actually uh, meaningful, right, and representative of the real world, but also something that is a stepping stone, right, in, for a classroom type setting where maybe we're doing frequency hopping over, you know, like four frequencies, four different channels um, and be able to, you know, send out live and capture and decode that live as well. So we'll see. That's that's still a a lot more material to write, but, uh, that's, that's where I would like to go if I that's, can. can yeah, that's a class in, yeah, that's a class in and of itself. So, um, you know, uh, probably one of the things that we should, uh, um, end on is, um, we have different roles within a, a control environment. So we have process we engineers, we have operators, field technicians, uh, we have, uh, um, it administrators, we've got network administrators and we've got the information security team. Uh, uh, both uh, on the offensive side and defensive side. So if you could you help people understand um, how to prioritize the ICS 410 class and the accessing exploiting class uh, for those uh, different roles? Yeah, no, no problem. Um, I think really the ICS 410 meets the needs of the vast majority of the people looking to do cybersecurity inside of ICS. Um, because anybody that's coming from that engineering role that wants to learn cybersecurity and some more of the IT technologies, because you know, honestly, in ICS, the attackers are attacking through the IT technologies we've added to our ICS systems. So, um, you know, that I think for anybody that comes from more of that engineering background that's trying to get into cybersecurity, uh, that's definitely the best course for them. And, and once again, anybody that's more from an IT cybersecurity wanting to learn how to do things properly in ICS and not cause problems and not, uh, you know, cause risks, then the ICS 410, once again, is, is really kind of geared for them. Uh, the assessing and exploiting, I would say maybe two different groups of people. Anybody that wants to do assessments or focus on doing assessments for the, this environment, which means your career options are a little bit more limited and who you could actually work for if, if that's what you want to focus your career on, right? Because if you want to do penetration testing of ICS equipment, right, one of your best choices is to work for a vendor because all vendors should be doing this to their equipment before they go to market and start selling it. The second uh, option you have is working for some type of a third party company like what InGuardians does and, and several other companies for this matter nowadays um, are doing because, you know, we end up doing consulting work both for uh, vendors and, or I should say not just consulting, but penetration testing work and consulting work for vendors as well as as owner operators like different utilities and manufacturers that are out there. Um, and if you wanted to work for, you know, one of those what we call owner operators, the electric utilities the oil and gas companies, the manufacturing companies, right? If you want to work for them and you want to do penetration testing and assessment, um, only usually the biggest of them usually have the resources to be able to have somebody on staff um, full-time doing that, that type of an assessment that's there. Uh, so that's really what that class is kind of geared to, or just people that want to, uh, you know, expand, expand their knowledge and just actually get into, to play with some of the technology. So even if you're a defender, right, right. you can definitely learn some tricks about how to optimize your defenses by, by doing the offensive and the penetration testing. But, you know, that's, that's not necessarily the, uh, the, the core audience. So. Awesome. Well, Justin, uh, um, do you have any final thoughts and also can you uh, let people know where to find you? Yeah, not a problem. Um, so you can definitely just find me by looking for my name, you know, Justin Searle um, on, on most of the social media websites. Pretty easy to, to do it. Um, I do have a handle um, on Twitter. My Twitter account is M-E-E-A-S. So that's Mias. Um, so it's been something that I've had with me for, you know, for the 
boy, praised my whole 23 year career so far. That name's kind of stuck. But uh, yeah, so on Twitter, you can find me on Mias. Uh, on GitHub, you can also find me on Mias as well for all my personal uh, type things. But in specifically around, if you want more information about either one of my courses um, or about the open source tools that I've released or the Control Things platform, right, which is the current iteration of the original Samurai STFU that uh, was name changed and evolved into Control Things platform, all of that, all the open source tools and breakdown of all these courses and even, even a calendar of when all these cor cal or these courses, both courses are being offered uh, publicly. You can just go right on over to controlthings.io. Controlthings.io does have link to my, my GitHub accounts, the both the MIAS one, as well as the, uh, the organization I specifically have set up on GitHub for all of my open source tools, uh, which is just controlthings-io on, on, uh, on GitHub. But like I said, I have links on all of that over from uh, controlthings.io. So that's probably the, the best single source to, to go to or best URL to know. Awesome. Well, Justin, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for breaking uh, uh, these two courses down for us. Sure. Uh, and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Thanks for teaching it. You, you still realize that uh, you still have taught the assessing exploiting class um, second only to me out of the five instructors I have teaching that course. So I, uh, yeah, I can't so wait to number two. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till the, the next opportunity where we can do that. So look no, me too. Me too. And is there anything that you may want to mention as about maybe some uh, future potential uh, offerings in the uh, in the next year or two? I, I, I know what you're, you're you're getting at. You're getting at the uh, um, uh, ICS 613 uh, class. Yes. Uh, ICS uh, SCADA penetration testing or or whatever we're going to call it. Uh, we're getting into that. Um, and uh, uh, once we get a little bit closer, I'll be able to talk more about it to Very give good. a breakdown like we're talking about here. But I appreciate that. Yes, it's uh, the, the SANS team is working really hard uh, to get that unit. You know, the team, the SROC and the uh, oh, yeah. um, and the team, uh, the, the things that go on in the background. Uh, we're working on supply chain issues right now, which you know about from uh, um, uh, doing this course. So uh, yeah, but honestly, you know, you know, the one thing I'm actually the most excited about your your new course because you're going to be the the lead author on that one is uh, the fact that you're going to be focusing on that uh, production environment using a whole bunch of uh, of ICS components and and equipment that's there, which I think is going to be great. And and uh, you're trying to you know, and, and then as time evolves, right, this is going to be trying to focus on that lab vice assessment while you're trying to focus on the production assessments. And I think Absolutely. that'll be a, a really great, uh, you know, complement between the two courses. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, it's, it's it's exciting. It's exciting time for what we're doing right now. We just got to get it out there, right? Definitely um, true. That's the hard part. <laughs> Writing these courses are, are definitely time consuming and, and a lot of effort. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate your time today. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another concept overview with the SANS ICS and Cutaway Security teams. Please let us know if there are other topics you would like us to cover in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like and subscribe to the SANS ICS YouTube channel. This has been Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security. Go forth and do good things.